We're going to start off with our objective is I can simplify. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I can simplify radicals. beyond square roots. The essential question is how do I simplify radicals? Beyond square roots. We're going to do something unusual and start our notes off with a reflection. I want you guys to look at this paper and give me a quick reflection in the notes section. What did you know that made it possible for you to complete this paper? You can do it in words or in examples or a combination. So again, what did you already know that made it possible for you to complete this paper? Tell me that in about a one minute long reflection. What you already knew that allowed you to solve those. That could be it. That is it. It's part of it. Wrap up your reflection in about 10 more seconds. Um, if you are a table of four, I'd like you to find an elbow partner. Tables of three, you guys will just be talking as a trio. Share what you knew with your elbow partner at your table. What did you put in your reflection? And bring it back together. Who can share something that you wrote down? You don't have to read the whole thing, but what's a fact that you guys knew that allowed you to complete this? Yes, Casey. Okay, so if I've got a square root, I'm looking for a number that got multiplied by itself. I'm going to rewrite that as I could multiply a factor two times. Okay, other ways of, or other facts or things that you might have known in order to make this happen. Tariq? Yeah, this was in order, so it made it pretty simple, right? If you knew that the square root of 1 was 1, and then you could see that there was a pattern here. It would have been more challenging if you worked these down the page instead of going across, true? Okay. Okay, so you guys also know, I don't know if you wrote this down, but if I've got the square root of 9, that equals 3, and that's related to this math fact, that 3 squared is equal to 9. True? Usually, I tell you when there's invisible ones in our math, but in this case, there's an invisible two. It's right here. That's why we call this a square root. 
because there's an invisible root here, we call it an index, we'll do some vocabulary on this tomorrow, um, of two. Go ahead, let's draw a line underneath the reflection because now I want us to get into a place where this is probably going to be some new learning for most of you. I'm going to put here the square root of 81. When there is nothing there, there's an invisible 2. And going back to what Casey said, I'm looking for an answer that when I multiply it by itself, it's going to get me to 81. And that number is 9. Because 9 squared is equal to 9 times 9, which is equal to 81. Those are related math facts. But what if I asked you to find the answer when it's not a 2, but there's a 4 there? This time I need a number that this equals that gets multiplied 4 times to get me to 81. What number do you think that might be? 3. How'd you get that, Adam? Okay. So he's saying that 3 to the 4th power is equal to 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, and that gives me 81. Notice that there's a relationship here. These two 3's would get me this 9, and these two 3's would get me this 9. And 9 times 9 is a fact we know, right? I'm going to go to another familiar one that you guys know. You know the square root of 64 is equal to 8. That's when this is invisible, so we, are, we know that there's a 2 there. What if I make it a different root and ask you to find it when there's a 3 here? So now I'm looking for a number that if I multiplied it, three times would get me to 64. Four. Let's try it. If I've got four times four times four, that gets us to 64. So our answer to this one is four, which means, I'm going to just finish this on the side, 4 to the third power is also equal to 64. We wouldn't have a square root of 27 that was a whole number, but we could have what we call a cube root of 27. And what would that number be? Three. Because 3 to the third power is equal to 27. Okay, I'm going to give you one more familiar one that you know, and a related one that I'm sure you're going to be able to come up with the solution of. Oops, I didn't mean to put a 2 there. I was thinking invisible 2. There we go. This has got a, a root of 4, and this one has the root of 2. What number did you guys come up with for the square root of 16? And what number did you come up with when the index is 4? 2. Yep. Okay, I'm going to do this the other way. I want you to come up with what number would be here when this is 64 and the answer is 2.
I'm seeing people try things in their heads. You're all like looking in the distance. Does that number work? Anybody think they have it yet? Okay, Henry, what do you have? It is a six. Because two times two times two is eight, yes? And then if I do that again, I have my second eight, don't I? And we already know eight times eight is 64. We've just broken it down to primes. That means that two to the sixth power is equal to 64. Okay, we're going to pause here. I would like you to come down to the summary section and look back up at our objective and look at the essential question. And I want you to write a summary of what you've discovered about roots, which are also called radicals, and put your thoughts of a summary down here. How do I simplify radicals beyond square roots? Okay, so let's take the last few minutes before we clean up to write a summary in your own words. <laughs> 